1933, an obscure group known as the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation drafted a document entitled the Regina Manifesto. The CCF eventually merged with the Canadian Labour Congress to form the political party known today as the New Democratic Party, or NDP. In 2011, the NDP surged to become Canada's official opposition for the first time in its history. The NDP's manifesto specifically outlined the party's plan to create a fully nationalized government-run economy, with government-run corporations, hospitals, schools, banks, and media. The manifesto specifically stated, We aim to replace the present capitalist system with its inherent injustice and inhumanity. The radical aspirations of the CCEF have been exhibited by many NDP governments across Canada, including the deposed Saskatchewan NDP, in the province where socialized medicine was born and where most telecom, insurance, and resource industries are fully nationalized or public. The NDP's manifesto also had a vision for a fully controlled economy, stating that control of finance is the first step in the control of the whole economy. Under Bob Ray's NDP leadership, Ontario faced severe and near-catastrophic economic conditions. Saskatchewan, under its own NDP rule, failed to achieve any significant economic prosperity, and instead ended up with two of its major cities being recognized as national crime capitals. Today, under BC's New Democrats, Vancouver is becoming a dystopian nightmare of tent cities and drug addicts, injecting themselves on the street in broad daylight. Tommy Douglas, like Jack Layton, was a charismatic orator. He had ways in which he would charm and captivate his supporters, many of which knew little about his true core beliefs. In the 1960s, Douglas was the focus of an RCMP investigation regarding his ties and associations to members of the Communist Party. What is far more disturbing than Douglas's communist sympathies were his views on eugenics and the mentally unfit. In 1933, while Nazi Germany and Hitler were rising, Douglas finished his thesis entitled Problems of the Subnormal Family for his M.A. in Sociology at McMaster University. His thesis was an open endorsement of policies that would have required couples to be certified as mentally fit in order to conceive children. For the modern NDP, not much has changed. Their constitution, which every leader since Jack Layton has refused to discuss, once aimed to modify and control the operations of the monopolistic productive and distributive organizations through economic and social planning. Towards these ends and where necessary, the extension of the principle of social ownership. That was from 2003. What is truly disturbing is not so much the NDP's principles, but their reluctance to share them with Canadians, and to be open and honest about their true ambitions. Instead, the NDP have insisted on keeping Canadians in the dark about their history. To learn more about the NDP's dark history, you can find copies of Tommy Douglas's McMaster essay, as well as copies of the Manifesto and its successor, the Winnipeg Declaration. All the evidence is there for us to find. All we need now is an explanation from every current federal and provincial NDP leader. What we do know is that eugenics and a government-run economy are anything but progressive. If most Canadians knew the NDP's true intentions, the party wouldn't stand a chance in hell at ever forming government. And maybe, as it stands now, it never will.